I like the idea of how we work out how we coordinate as a society. Because I think if we don't figure that out, we just end up with something that's that's worse. And whether that's worse because we have less care or less social coordination, or we just end up with some new kind of authoritarian structure that comes in its place that fills a vacuum. Yeah. That's what I always worry about. But then, then get challenged on the idea of like, should there be hate speech laws? We have them in the UK and and I think sometimes they've been used ineffectively. Mm -hmm. So I kind of get lost. Some of them are pretty era. scary, actually, yeah. in the in the UK. Like I, I um, do you know about the the comedian with the dog? Yeah, I mean, some of the the stuff you guys do in the UK with these like anti-social behavior orders and stuff like that is actually for my for me is like a little bit too far. I'm actually more libertarian than that even. Yeah. Um. So so um. We you know we could talk about that, but like I I I I think though, look. I, I look, I, I think that, that we have figured out a really good system, right? And and I think liberal democracy is 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 the best thing that we currently have on offer in terms of like trying to build a society that tries to create a system in which like we can try to find some balance between all these things we're talking about, like uh, making sure that like the, the, you know, people who are down on their luck don't like end up dead in a gutter or, you know, making sure that like, you know, uh, our, our, our government and our leaders can be held accountable. You know, we, we do that at the ballot box, right. With, you know, with, uh, with electoral democracy um, and making sure that like the government can't go too far. We do that with like, you know, um, placing a liberal, conception of rights as a constraint on what the government can do you know that that kind of started with the magna carta back in the back in in the uk like hundreds of years ago um the us constitution was like a, a, a an, another major step and many other countries have adopted um constitutions and, and human rights charters and stuff like that to try and codify that um and i think like like what like let, let's like what can we agree on like we i can agree that like Major, like we sh yeah we should not have tyrannical major majorities that are running roughshod over minorities we should not have government with unchecked power um if P if government is going to have power over us um they they have to be accountable to us they have to be transparent like these are like these are all things that like we figured out and what's really frustrating about living in 2022 is like the fact that like there's this sense that like everything has failed. The whole system has failed. Democracy has failed. Liberalism has failed. We need something new. I don't think that's true. I think we've just like gotten really lazy about fighting for, you know, these systems, fighting for the systems of democracy, fighting for liberal values. It kind of feels like maybe a little bit that that, and especially in the recent months now, that that maybe that that zeitgeist has shifted and, and that gives me a little bit of hope. But like, I don't. I don't like. like what, what is it about that that that's so offensive to some people in this space? A liberal <laughs> democracy, like it all. It, I, it's so. It's so weird. I, I feel like in some of these conversations, it's it's almost like, like it, it feels like sacrilege to even like say you support these things. I think because historically, you can point to a number of things that the state has done, which is not great. Which yeah. is locking up people in yeah. jail. Which is unnecessary wars in the Middle East yep. and various other places. Um, it is massive surveillance. Yep. Like I think there's plenty of things. All these things have happened. Yeah, and I think there's plenty of reasons to look at them and say, this is a problem. This isn't good. Mm -hmm. I'm just not the one who thinks we should burn it all down. Well, what, what, like, but this, I, I actually love, I, lo I love that you brought this up because yep. what you say is, what, what, those criticisms are, are, are true. Right. I mean, we talked about one of them earlier when I was talking about Radley Balco and mm. and um, um, and police successes. Um, you brought up, you know, like foreign wars. Um, you know, the you know the Iraq War of two thousand three comes to mind as as something that's like I when when I think about it, it's like it's it's enraging to think that that actually happened, um, and that that the people who perpetrated it, you know, haven't been held accountable for it. Those things are all true, but like. I, I think if you're gonna do this, you have to engage in a little bit of counterfactual reasoning, mm -hmm. right? Like, 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 what is the real alternative, right, to trying to go forward and trying to reform and trying to make the, the future better? Um, the, the reality is, we're a very flawed species. We always have been. 
Like we're like, we've like, I mean, sure. Like, yeah, like we've done all these bad things, but like human beings, like and mass have done really bad things for thousands of years, right? Like um, up until, you know, the last couple hundred years, like slavery was actually legal in most places in the world. We forget about this. I mean, it's, I mean, there's, there's an embarrassing legacy in the United States of slavery and, and, and we should be embarrassed by that legacy and we should be learning about that legacy. But like, let's like, if we take human history as like a, as like a, a total, like, a total view on human history, like humanity has been pretty shitty to itself. I mean, we've been like, we've, you know, we've, we've been, we fought wars, many wars, not just the Iraq war, but like insane war, World War One. like I, I don't even like, I, I mean, I, I, I've studied it and I'm still not quite clear on like what, what happened there. It's like the weirdest thing that ever happened um, in the, in the 20th century that, that led to, to millions of deaths. And so we're, we're like, yeah, like we're, we have the capacity to be very shitty, but we also have a capacity to be very beautiful, right? We, we, like, we've, we've gotten progressively better. Like, you know, there's, there's another way of looking at our history. There's another way of, of like course, looking yeah. at um, like where we've come from, right? Like slavery is not legal anymore. Same-sex marriage is legal. Um, you know, we, we have like most Americans today, if you poll them, think Iraq, the Iraq war was a mistake. I mean, that's, that's progress of a kind. Like the fact that like, you know, that, that, that people realize that like these mistakes have happened. So like, I mean, this, this idea that like, what are we gonna do? We're gonna anthropomorphize like countries and say, well, you did this. And so these sins are attached to you. And so we have to somehow like punish the, the state, which isn't even a thing. It's just like a, a conglomeration of a whole bunch of people working together and reacting to incentives. And it's like, like the state isn't, it's just a, it's just an idea. It's just a concept. It's just us following a bunch of rules we wrote down on a piece of paper. Like it's not like the, like the United States is not a, is not a person that's guilty of something, right? Like, I mean, I think a lot of us think like that as like a mental shortcut. And I know why we do, because it's like a useful abstraction, but like, it, it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't tell you what, it, I mean, if you do think like that, then yeah, we should take the United States out back and we should execute it for its crimes. But it's not, but it's, but the United States isn't a person. It's not like, it, it, and it doesn't make sense to think of it that way. I think there's parts of what the United States has done by creating this kind of like, maybe this is one area you agree with and why you're a fan of Bitcoin, but created this global reserve currency. I, um, are you friends with Alex Gladstein? Yeah. Okay. Him and I, him and I are, yeah, we, we, uh, we had dinner just the other night. Oh, great. So I'm going to bore people on the show because I keep mentioning this at the moment, but it just tends to happen when you have a important show. We made a show about, did he talk to you about his paper he's working on on the World Bank and the IMF? Yeah. 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 So we made a show on that. And then, you know, a lot of the, the ability for not just the USA, I mean, Europe and other Western liberal democracies, the ability for them to be able to have progress and create this high standard of living is this kind of economic imperialism that they've imposed on the rest of the world. You know, things like that, again, like they're not good. Mm -hmm. And and we're in agreement on this. So so my question there really be, would be, well, what are the reforms then that we want? Mm -hmm. What are the reforms that would be good, that, that would kind of end some of the things we've, you know, perpetrated on the rest of the world or, you know, even in our own societies? Because... That's where I'm more comfortable is it's not to burn it all down. It's to say, look, okay, democracy has its challenges. Well, how can we improve things? Yeah, so uh, it's funny. Alex and I actually had this conversation over dinner. Great. And we were talking about the World Bank and the IMF. Um, and, and, you know, and, and he had asked me, like, you know, like, like, like how I thought about it. And I got into talking a little bit about, you know, if we're going to get a little bit sort of sociological and philosophical here is like, you know, the way I look at a lot of these things is, is there's like, there's, there's, there's path dependence issues, right. That, that get us to like where we are today. You know, I, I think, I think it's like, it, it's very true that the world bank and the IMF um, have done quite a bit of damage in terms of like in, enmeshing the global South in, in debt and then giving them more debt to pay off, old, you know, older debt, and have created like what what a, what is like something that is, I mean, moral is is morally um, problematic to say the least. Um, and and yeah, like I mean, to like, and I and I think like Gladstein's message on this around Bitcoin being this emancipatory 
force here to allow people and countries to take control of their own destiny is certainly something that I that I support and I'm in agree, agreement with. I, I think it's, you know, I, I think that when you look at like, how did we get here, right? Like, I, I think that there's a lot of road to hell uh, being paved by good intentions there. I think there was, there's probably were some starry eyed um, people along the way. Like I, I'm not a, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? Like I, I, I believe that one of the reasons why like, you know, like Nixon originally like broke down and, and went to China and started to normalize relations and the fact that Thatcher, um, you know, handed Hong Kong back over to China was a belief that, you know, through engagement and through like economic development that, the, that, that China in particular would liberalize over time as a result of like economic reforms. And I think the World Bank and the IMF have, have tried to follow a similar script, hoping that like through economic investment that a lot of these countries would, um, would reap the benefits of market economies. They would like become more productive. They'd be able to pay back these loans and they would become more like liberal democracies that were, that were more wealthy. What, what ended up happening though was like, a lot of these governments were corrupt. They embezzled a lot of the money, didn't make it to the people, didn't actually turn into investments at all. Um, infrastructure wasn't built. If it was, it was like purely in service of just like, you know, setting up mines that were exporting raw materials back, yes, like to like first world countries. But like, I do think that like two things are true. One, these systems were were set up with people who were starry eyed about the power of like um, economic reforms and market economies that would actually lift people out of poverty worldwide. And, and by the way, like market reforms have lifted billions of people out of poverty. Let's like be very clear. But like we we didn't we didn't spend enough time like um, advancing the cause of of freedom, liberal, liberty, and democracy. We actually, what, what happened was, is we had a neoliberal movement in the, the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s in particular that felt if we could just like jumpstart capitalism around the world, um, we, would, we, would, we would then like democracy and liberalism would follow. And I think, I think the, what happened with World Bank and the IMF had a lot to do with that. And, and we reached this, this, this point where we are today, where we're looking at it now and we're like, well, holy crap, like it's, it's, it hasn't done that. It's made these countries, uh, it's, it's actually made them even more dependent on foreign aid, um, over time. They haven't developed their economies. Their, their governments are, are corrupt and that corruption is being reinforced by these regimes that we've created. Um, and so it's like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's a, like, it, it's a moral dilemma that we have to to take on, and so I agree that like we need we need people um, to realize that, and we need to start taking positive steps towards like including billions of people on this planet that that simply do not have access to what we do sitting here at this table. Back to my question on reforms, though, what do you believe needs reforming? What do I, I, yeah. I think I, we could you might be have done that. this. We could be here for the next five hours. If I mean, what do I believe needs reforming? Like specifically with the IMF or the no, World Bank? No, more like, with domestic, say domestic politics to begin with. Just to give, you know, to give, I think there's a lot of kind of nihilism at the moment. Uh, I think people are losing faith in the ability, what, what their vote actually does yeah, or means. Yeah, so the, the, I, politics, I, sorry, just politics seems to be attracting shit people. And I think good people avoid it because they don't want to have their lives destroyed. I mean, at the moment in the UK, it's just like, you know, we don't have the two-party politics issues that you have here in the US. We just have just fucking wankers in politics, just absolute, like people you don't want to vote for. It's like Keir Starmer and the Labour Party. I couldn't vote for him. And, you know, we've had four prime ministers in the last couple of years in uh, in the Conservative Party. I mean... Boris Johnson, by the way, who used to claim he's a libertarian. Um, he's not, he was just a conservative. Um, we've had Liz Trust, destroyer of economy. We have Rishi Sunak at the moment, who is very authoritarian in the way he speaks at times. There's just there's no one to vote for. Mm -hmm. And it's it's no one to believe in or get behind. There's like it's no one to look up to. Yeah, I think I think it's well, it 
Yes, I mean, if you want democracy to survive, people have to have a perception that government is responsive to their needs. And it's like paying attention to the things that they care about. Um, and I think, yeah, like, I mean, that, that nihilism you speak of, like, yeah, I, I mean, I'm raging against that all the time um, because the reality is, is that we're the problem. We're the problem with democracy. I'm the problem with democracy. We're all the problem with democracy, right? Like, um, if like like this idea that it's just the politicians' fault, I mean, it, we, it, that can't be true, right? I mean, like, um, we keep voting for them. We, yeah, I mean, we we keep vote we we keep voting for them, and we can stand for election. Um, and and I think we need to reinvigorate people's belief in that. Like, I mean, like political change can happen. And it has, right? Like, I mean, the UK was an economic basket case in the 1970s, right? And and of course, you know, Thatcher came in and and reformed the reformed the UK economy. She she bra- broke the back of the the trade unions. I mean, like, and which to which was a very difficult period um, for the for the UK. But like, the UK like went on to a massive economic boom. Um, the next 20 years in, in the UK were um, was impressive in terms of how much economic development happened after that. So, I mean, the reality is, is that like, we can make things better. We, we can, and we have. This idea that we're stuck, the system has failed, it can't go any further is, is exact, is, is, is a, it's a false despair. Like it, it, it's, it's the, within the power of all of us to, to do this. And, I, I, I'm, I guess like all I can do is keep screaming from the rooftops that like, yes, we should all care about democracy. We should all, you know, if we want something to happen, then we should identify candidates that support our points of view on those things. And we should try to elevate them. Um, we can donate money. We can support big, I mean, we, we should at some point get to like how Bitcoin can help with democracy. Cause I think it wow, can. That was on my next question. <laughs> but yeah. So, but I, I, I think, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the double-edged sword of democracy. Um, if you engage, then, then democracy will, will respond to that engagement. If you disengage, then special interests and nefarious interests and malevolent interests will capture the politicians, they'll capture politics, and we will have governments that are not responsive to the wants and desires and needs of, uh, of the, the people who they govern. It's that simple.